questions. Here we go. Bodie McP. Bodie McP. No, Bodie McBoatface. Oh, Billy. No. I always mix that up. Aaron, how important is uh, base management in two channel setup with speakers like Kef or Source Point 8s? Is there an issue if you can't limit low frequencies? Few two channel yeah. components have base management. Aaron's, Aaron's an engineer. You have to send super chats. Just kidding, Bodie. No, super <laughs> chats right now. Um, uh, I'm just wondering is there a reason that he's mentioned the KEF and the source point eights? Or, I mean, it's really any speaker, I guess, is what this applies. How important is base management and two channel setup? Is there an issue if you I don't quite follow? One of you guys want to explain what the question How is. How important is base management with speakers like CAF or source one? Is, is there an issue if you can't limit low frequencies? Like maybe he's mean, saying like is if they don't have that um high pass on the speaker itself? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like mm, yeah, the part where weird. is there an issue if you can't limit low frequencies? I'm not quite following that. So I'm he can I, so you do testing where he knows knows he can reply to us and let us know. Yeah, you, right. you you've shown measurements where you'll show the the compression, mm -hmm. and then you also show this is what happens if you cross over it eighty hertz, and sometimes yeah. it helps. Yeah, right. sometimes it is it. Um, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, if it's a good, if it uses good drivers, then the distortion and the compression don't really change all that much from being full range or just being 80 hertz and up. Sometimes it, you know, at least, well, it changes obviously on, on the 80 hertz and below part, right? Because that's not playing. But if it's a good driver with good motor structure and good inductance control and those kind of things, then it doesn't really have an impact on the 80 hertz and up part anymore because that's already pretty well under control with the drive unit itself. Right. So, yeah, I need to follow up for, for this question because I'm just kind of tripping up. My brain is kind of slow today, too. So maybe that's on me. Is there an issue if you can't limit low frequencies? I mean, there's OK. So if I just take this at the surface of. Does the system perform better if you have the ability to add a subwoofer, then the answer for pretty much every speaker is going to be yes. Right. I mean, there, there are cases, you know, if you have like a full range tower that has the capability to really do 20 hertz and up, then, then maybe, you know, maybe not as much, but then you get the benefit of being able to place a subwoofer almost wherever, and you can do lower crossovers, and you can increase dynamics. So he says, okay, I own the KIFs and won the, oh, are you the what? dude who won them from audio advice? Wow. That is awesome. Oh, I'm jelly, man. Oh, that's oh. Awesome. Nick. Um, I would say, all right, so here's the deal. I'm buying a pair of source point eights myself, and I'm not gonna run them with the sub all the time, but I will at some point buy probably two subwoofers to help supplement from like 60 hertz and down, or just kind of depending on what the room needs. But I would use a subwoofer because it'll increase the dynamic range for one. Uh, it'll take the load off the lower mid base area, and that helps, at least in my opinion. The compression on the on the KEF, depending on which one you're talking about, can be a bit high, below like 100 hertz. Uh, for the MoFi, I don't yes, think it was the, that the R3 Metas, right? Yeah, if I'm talking the R3 Meta, the I mean, pretty much any of the KEFs that I've reviewed, except for the KEF Reference 1 Meta, that's... Those are kind of the exceptions. The, the compression of those is really good. Uh, should I be concerned about not being able to high pass the bookshelves? Okay. Simple answer is assuming that you don't necessarily need the response below 50, 40 hertz in your room, and you're not asking, am I going to get better, <laughs> better sound with a subwoofer? Because the answer to that is pretty much always yes. If your question is just straight up, if I use a subwoofer, or if I don't have a subwoofer, am I going to suffer any issues? So that's what I was just getting into. With the KEF, there's going to be some compression. With the MoFi, I don't think they were really that limited in output, uh, at least at sane levels. So then the next question is, how loud are you listening? I would say that 
you know, at three meters away, 90 to 95 decibels, you're probably going to be okay with the MoFi, with the KEF. You might find that you lose a little bit of impact in the lower frequency range, like let's say like 80 hertz and below. So I think you'll probably be okay for the most part. But if you're listening at how at loud levels, then you're going to want a subwoofer. I know it's kind of a verbose way of putting it, but I mean that that question is these questions are always it depends. Like the, the answer to everything in audio, it depends. Pretty much it depends. Right. Yeah, I met the dude at the studio. I was just like, hey, blah, 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 blah. He's like, well, I'm like, it depends. He said, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's your one minute explanation of how would you how would Aaron go about integrating a sub with these source point eights? So what's your quick how are you gonna do it? Well, what are you I'll be, be sure using the Anthem AVM70, and I will see whatever they got built into that, I suppose. Okay, do, and what do they have to make sure of when you're doing that? I, I, I think I know the answers, but for those who are uh, maybe kind of newer to this. What, yeah. was the, what was the question? I missed the well, first uh, how, What would you make sure that you'd integrate? So you have source oh. point eight? Um, I think, you wanna... yeah, I think the way that I would go about it, just my general advice would be set them up wherever you want to set them up. Play them like you normally would full range. And then if you have the means, like let's say you're running like a Denon or something like that. If you have the means, set the high pass filter on and then just start bringing that up until you feel like you've increased. I don't like seeing just myself. Uh, I know. Until, just, until yeah, right? Let's just yeah, go with weird. China then. It's super weird. What's China what doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Turn them up like you normally would. Start at a low volume. Listen, find a bass track first, like something that has like a good 40 or 50 hertz that you typically listen to. Don't go out of your way to find something that you won't ever listen to. Something you typically listen to, listen at lower levels, and then start turning the volume up and listen for where you feel like, ah, the impact isn't quite the same. And then go set a crossover and start bringing that crossover up higher and higher. And what you may find is, you know, a hot pass filter like 50 hertz may kind of be a good middle ground to where you don't feel like you're losing a lot of um, the impact from low to high volume. So the problem there is that as you start increasing that high pass filter, you're going to start cutting things off, but you're really just trying to tell the difference between low volume to high volume. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because your high volume might be different from my high volume. You may be going louder or lower. So you need to figure out where that sweet spot for you is in terms of volume versus high pass filter. And then if you feel like you need that high pass filter. You can't run that speaker full range because you're losing too much dynamic range at higher volume. Then bring a subwoofer in, and then you're probably going to do room measurements, figure out where you want to put that subwoofer at in terms of crossover point. And there's this handy tool on the spatial audio. Television. I was, I was, I was going to say it, but you know, yeah, it just it goes through the different uh, octaves, starting yeah. high and going low, and if you turn it up. There's going to be one where maybe something's making a weird noise or the speaker starts chuffing or the port starts chuffing or the speaker making some bad sounds. No so yeah, it makes it easy. But I was going to also say that what I was doing last night was working on integrating my sub with just a left and right speaker here in the studio. And it can be tricky, right? Because they can be timeline, but be out of phase. Yeah. The polarity could be flipped, right? So they're perfectly fighting each other. Yeah, exactly. So it's never going to sound good that way. It's it's tough. I mean, it you know, like it's tough to tell somebody this is what you need to do, and all I can do is operate under general guidelines because mm -hmm. your volume, your distance, those things that you need are going to be different to some degree than mm -hmm. mine, right? So, but that's what I would do. I would just try to figure out, pick some music you typically listen to, start a low volume, ramp the volume up. Oh, do, am I noticing a difference? If you're not noticing a difference, you're done. You don't have to add a subwoofer. If you're noticing a difference, then you need to start playing around with the high pass filter, and then you need to bring a subwoofer into the into the fold. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, what else? What else we got oh, here? Look, off. Tim, look, I got to oh. show it off though. Yes, let's see. Mac Tim, Mini, you can me up full screen. I'll hide my face. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This the it's the Weem amplifier that Tim Tim just mentioned. Flip it around. That thing is cool. Three hundred yeah. bucks, under three hundred bucks now, man. And and that like is, what I like about it, Scott, it. I, Joe, I heard you talking about it last week. So that that's what prompted crazy. me to reach out to the manufacturer and say, "Hey, uh, you emailed me last year," and I said, "No, 
<laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> so, but I thought it would be cool to like start reviewing little stuff like this, you know, when other people have already got data for it. There's a there's a Patreon of mine who uh, who has data for it that he said he was going to publish. So I can point to him for the data. And I can just be like, look, this is a cool little thing that I think will be interesting. And here's the data for it. And I think it's all right. If the data doesn't look good, I probably wouldn't waste my time reviewing it or talking about it. But I, yeah, like you said, it's like two ninety nine or three ninety nine, and it's you know it's sixty watt Ooh, uh, two channel. I don't know what the different loads are, um, but it's got like nine bands of EQ that you can play it around with. An app, I think. I think I'd have to double check, but it's got a remote. It's got a little voice remote. I mean, I'm just like, dude, this if it is good as it looks on paper. This would be like the perfect little bedroom setup or a small living room setup, you know, for a set of speakers. And then you could play with the EQ. It's got a subwoofer for output as well, which you could daisy chain on to some cheap stuff. See, a little subwoofer for output. With bass management, though. Did you see that? Does it have bass management? Bro, it, it'll, you can choose the crossover point. All right. The, there you listen, go. There's, there's, you get that thing, Billy. There you go. And then also, when, when, you cross it, when you cross it over, it also applies the high pass to the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how they're doing that, but they did email me. They did email me also after I said I definitely don't want to review it. You should definitely review it now. I mean, I'm gonna do some basic testing on it because I don't want to be the guy who like just reviews electronics just all willy nilly, and I'm just cycling it. like every other day. I've got a new electronics thing because all I did was just take it out of the box and say, "Oh, it looks great," and then I'm done. And you know, kind of like you went on a, a, a rant about, I 100% get that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe so I'll, maybe I'll take a different approach where maybe I'll use it to EQ a system and kind of walk people through how to use it and integrate a sub and maybe do some EQ on the speakers. Ah, yeah. It's a different angle. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily iFi.